What is up everyone? Uh, today I'm just going to go through a quick tutorial on how to paint a realistic bluegill. So this is a glide bait that I painted. Um, if you can kind of see these wicked paints behind me, that's what we're going to use today. Um, but this is just a, a nice easy bluegill pattern that can get bit. It can get bit. So uh, we're going to go through this tutorial today, show you how to paint something like this, whether it's on a glide bait like this, which I got from Schultz baits, whether it's a 2.5 square bill from Dinger, it doesn't matter. Um, this is something you can throw down on pretty much any kind of bait that you have, uh, whether it be wood, resin, um, plastic, whatever. So first things first, since this one's already kind of always, uh, it's already white, um, I'm starting with basically going to start with the wicked purple uh sorry detail violet excuse me from wicked and uh we'll start with that and move on paint by paint down the line so i'm gonna load the the detail violet into the brush and then we're gonna we're gonna get moving so the detail violet's gonna be the very first color that we're gonna use in this layering process so um it's going to be hardly visible near the end of this whole whole thing but just enough that it's going to kind of give it a purple hue um, I like to spray from the back so you'll get it from the scales so spraying from the back but it's actually going to be a rather randomized pattern there's no uh, no way that no reason that you need to have this perfect around any aspect but you'll see it come through later in a couple of spots that are really neat Pretty much all you'll need for the uh, let's spray a couple more spots just to give it a little bit more aggressiveness but that's it for the purple um, now we're gonna start to accent the gill I like to use this wicked uh, wicked's fastback green it kind of gives a cool blue hue with a little bit of a color change to it um, just along the underside of the gills here so load that up and uh, we'll go from there okay again this is just an accent color um, we're not going to try to shoot a ton of it. There are some blue gills that definitely have very, very blue gills, but, um, I just want to kind of be gentle along this area, just enough that it'll show when we get to that final product. All right, next, highlight the uh, underside of the, the gills and the belly with this pearl orange. That does a pretty darn good job. Um, again, it can be to your taste, but I like to give it just enough color that you can see it and they'll be able to, the fish will be able to see it. Okay, so far it looks pretty close to a first graders art project, but I promise you 
it'll start to clear uh, clear itself out and look pretty sharp here soon. So uh, next thing, going down the line, we're gonna do detail sepia. Uh, I'll load that up and then actually we're gonna do that for the striping portion. Um, the bluegills have pretty pronounced bars, again, like this particular one. So we're gonna go through, hit these bars. We'll do usually five, one, two, three, four, five. I like to do five, some people can do more. You can do a ton if you want. Um, five with the glide bait looks pretty sharp. But uh, we'll do that and then uh, it's off to the races. Okay, with the, the, the bars, um, basically just take a piece of, this is an old piece of, what did I use here? Fly, fly hooks, um, kind of the, pla the paper from the fly hook packaging. Um, cut out a little bit of a stencil, like a bar of stencil. Um, but you're gonna two side this, so you're first gonna kind of lay it down spray mostly the stencil but you're going to get some overspray onto the bait and you're going to kind of go down the bait and then switch sides and go this way so i use the brown i like I said the sepia colors um you could use a gray a black whatever you prefer most of my bluegills i shoot more of a greenish hue to them um, than anything so we're going to kind of start this process here and go down the bait will actually start at the we'll start here first that side and flip it, do the exact same to its left side. All right, the bars are now laid down. The layering is still looking pretty good. Um, now the fun part, the last few colors. Um, so I pretty much go over this entire paint scheme now with this pearl lime green from Wicked. So that pearl lime green is basically gonna mask some of the colors below it, the blue, the purple, and obviously the sepia bars. It's gonna mask it, but it's gonna make it a lot more natural. Um, natural looking and uh, that's the next step so I'm going to put this back into the helping hands and we are going to move on to that pearl pearl lime green portion okay pearl lime green is loaded um, okay so the first time when I sprayed the purple I sprayed it from the rear so I kind of want to keep again those accents on the rear portion of these scales if you ever have a bait that's got scales that's the way to do it so here with your ending layer or your top layer if you want to shoot from the front that way um, so that the scale the rear portion of the scale still kind of keeps that that's hue so i am just going to start to kind of go through and cover up pretty much everything from front to back
crushing this thing, so now I hope you like things in the tail for sure. Hopefully the lighting isn't super harsh, but and you can see that. Try to put a shadow on there. Um, but yeah, there's that first layer of green. Again, that just starts to kind of create the mask, like I said on this one. Um, once we start to go with that detail, umber and that moss, uh, the wicked moss green, pearl moss green, I believe it is, or detail moss green, that's gonna just pretty much naturalize everything to give it a, a much darker shade uh, like most bluegills have. So, all right, next one, we're gonna go detail burnt umber. That's gonna be just to kind of accent some of these areas, kind of give some more of a, a splotchiness feel to it before we go with the moss green. So I will load that up and we'll be right there. I decided to go, we'll go detail moss green next rather than the sepia or the detail burnt umber, excuse me. Uh, I figure we're gonna go a little lighter than darker for accents. So again, with this one, it doesn't need to be any sort of perfect method. I still wanna shoot from the front back. Um, but as you go through and layer this, you're just gonna see that coloration change to a much more of a natural bluegill look rather than this highlighter neon Ben and the Simpsons type thing going on. So. That's about enough for the moss green. And you're still gonna be able to see these stripes. They're pretty pronounced, which is okay, or the bars. That's still exactly kind of what we wanna see. You're gonna see a little hue in the purple in the rear. You can kind of catch that. And then when you switch that perspective to the front, a lot more green, a lot more green. Let me focus in, there you go. So, looking good. Finishing up some details on this and then uh, pretty much done. But next thing, load the burnt detail, detail burnt umber. I can't get these paints right, but detail burnt umber, load that up. And that'll just kind of complete the, the overall process of things. Personally, I think this detail burnt umber really just makes things look quite earthy, quite natural. Um, you don't have to put on a lot of it, but it's just gonna make that moss, detail moss green, just look sharp. And you'll notice I'm just pretty, I'm pretty much pulling the trigger back and it may not be the most perfect method for the gun, but it still randomizes some of the spray, which Again, we're talking about fish that have so many different patterns that are completely randomized. That's why I like to do this, because you never know, you never see anything that's exactly the same, so. Now 
I am going to use a stencil that I just cut out of some paper to give these fins a little extra color to them. Still using the detail burnt umber though. Last thing, Wicked Pearl Black just to accent the gill on that little gill plate. And uh, that's going to be it for this particular bluegill session. Finishing up with that Wicked Pearl Black. Just going to use the little PSI to, to work through the ear on this uh, gill plate. Kind of finalize that detail. Shoot a little around the eyes, darken that up a bit. All right, there you have it. That is a quick, pretty quick, easy bluegill replica. Um, using Wicked Paints uh, from Createx. I'll scan, I'll pan through basically each color that I used in the order that I used. Um, but yep, I just pop some eyes on that one, clear coat it, and you're gonna have another one to throw just like this. But like I said, it's a pretty simple bait pattern. Very, very, very effective, regardless if you live in the Midwest, down to even the South, there's bluegill and bream pretty much everywhere throughout this United States and the countries. So, thanks for watching. Hopefully this taught you a little bit. Quick, easy way, like I said, throw down for a bluegill. Let me pan through these paints real quick just to show you. All right, detail violet, wicked flashback green, pearl orange, detail sepia. Coral lime green, detail moss green, detail burnt umber, and then to finish it up with the Wicked Pearl Black. Those colors put together, get you one of those or one of these. So a good bait to throw, especially in this glide bait this time of year. Bass are crazy, super hungry, very aggressive. Um, any time of the year, you know, you can make this work as long as it suspends or floats enough where you can slow it down during the colder water temps and speed it up during the warmer water temps. But I appreciate you stopping by for this painting session. Uh, if you find uh, find this useful, drop a comment, drop a like. Um, if you don't, well, I'm sorry, but I tried. Either way, hit me up with some comments. Let me know what you guys do if you're painting or if you're a, a lure maker. Um, let me know what, what you change, what different colors that you use, whether you use different paint schemes or paint companies. Um, I'm always trying and wanting to try new things. So let me know in the comments below what your thoughts were. Like I said, I appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.